lovely young woman Full of faith, full of life, full of grace Travel all over singing by faith The word of God to a dying race She sang from her heart and ministered from her soul Telling God's people continue to hold Praise the Lord. So glad you tuned into a great God. You know, we have a, a really nice program for you today. Um, I'll be coming from uh, Romans, the 10th chapter, the second verse. And this is what it reads. But before I read it, what I want you to do is get your Bibles, get a pad, get a pen, in case you want to jot something down. Because like I always say, we're ever learning. You know, we're going to be learning until the day we leave here. But let me read the word of God to you. Romans, and you can follow me, 10 and 2, which says, For I bear them record that they have a zeal of God, but according, not according to the knowledge of God. And let me read that again. For I bear them record that they have a zeal of God, but not according to the knowledge of God. And this is what Paul was saying about the Jews in his time. And he was praying for them. He said, because he says his heart desire for Israel and prayer to God for Israel that they might be saved. This is letting you know that they were lacking somewhere in their lives. Well, I decided to Find out what, what, is, what does the word zeal mean? And I went on in the dictionary, and this is what I got. A zeal is a fervor for a person, cause, or object. A great desire or endeavor or enthusiastic diligence. Now, the word fervor means a great warmth, eagerness of feeling. Earnestness, meaning a serious intention, purpose, or effort. And in Romans 10, the Apostle Paul went through great measures to introduce Christ to the Jews. Even though he wasn't received, that was his mission. Well, you cannot know God unless you know Christ because he, he and his Father is one. And Christ is the complete revelation, praise God, of God. And God had appointed Christ to bring man and God together through salvation's plan. What is salvation? Freedom from sin. But he, all of us must come through the great name of Jesus, the Son of God. Paul understood the fact of, praise God, and tried to lay out salvation plan. Many times, even when he was arrested, he still was able to lay out salvation plan. And this, is what, this was a blessing for the people. And Romans 10 shows us that the Jews of yesterday are no different from us today. Some of us do have a form of godliness, but yet we deny the power thereof. Meaning that we, we, we know, we, we have a form such as going to church and knowing Christian doctrines and principles and positions and policies of the church. And we, we, we teach and, you know, we spend time trying to memorize the word. And, and, and then, you know, we get to a point in our lives where we're not even using it because we don't got the glory from people. Oh, she's saved. She knows that word. Oh, she's this, she's that. The outer appearance means nothing to God. We get so that after we get the word in us and we begin to preach here and teach here and, and, and share the word of God with others, but we're not living it and, and behind closed doors, we find that when we get up to preach the word now, we're using cliches, Christian cliches, and, and, and we're using uh, uh, community Christians' traditions uh, that, to help us get through uh, what we are about to do. But think about this. You may 
not make it in the kingdom, but the one you preach to may because his heart is right and his heart is pure. And that's the heart we should be look, striving to achieve. In the, in, in the inner attitude of man, he has to believe, hallelujah, that his zeal or his zealousness is not to get glory or fame. That his zealousness or his excitement is because he knows the plan of salvation. He knows this God, hallelujah, through the scripture. And he's striving to walk within the scripture and he's applying it to his daily life. And we have to understand this because um, no one's perfect. But we can be perfect because what God deems perfect is not what man deems perfect. And what God ordains for us, each one of us, is for us. Um, you know, as we learn the word of God, we find, well, there may be somebody who's the pinky. Huh? You know, we're in the body of Christ. There may be somebody who's the thumb. There may be somebody who's the mind, the brain, the eyes. But he's forming this body for when he comes back, he shall take his church unto himself. For, for, for the Lord lets us know that he's coming back again. Just like he left, because he went to prepare a place for us. That where he is, we may be also. We have to forget about the out appearance of man or what man throws at you. We have to pray and ask God for a discerning of the spirit of that man, that you may know, hallelujah, what it, 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 if it's that good and perfect gift which God has bestowed upon him, if he's walking in it, or if he's uh, 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 just throwing out what you think, what he thinks or she thinks you want to hear. There are things that we have to look for. And the things that breaks our zeal, or in other words, break our fellowship with God. After we become hard-hearted because, see, he doesn't just throw you away right then and there. He, 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 he beckons you. He, he pleads with you. The Spirit of God deals with your emotions and your Spirit of God will send a tormenting spirit until you get right, until you get where he wants you to be, that he can use you for his service. The Spirit of God is wise. It's wise. And that's why Jesus said, I go away that the comforter might come. And the comforter is the Spirit of God. Well, these are some of the things that I found that uh, it's just a few things that will break our zeal with God. And I went into Romans 10, I mean Romans 3, 4, and 5. Let's read what Romans 3, 4, and 5 says. Yes, Romans Three, four, and five. God forbid. Let God be true, but let every man be a liar, as it is written, that thou mightest be justified in thy saying, and mightest overcome when thou art judged. But if our righteousness commend the righteousness of God, see? Is God unrighteous? Who taketh vengeance? And then we go down to the next verse where it says, God forbid, for then how shall God judge the world? We have to be careful of our righteousness. And when we're, we're, we're working for the Lord, we got to be careful of the zeal, how we uh, uh, move within that zeal. Because, um, you know, the Bible lets us know, hallelujah, that... Uh, Sometimes, you know, people, they go, go, go. They don't take time to minister to the Lord. They don't take time to, to read the scripture. They don't take time to really pray. They're just running off and just doing what they feel that they have to do to get them through the day. But this is something that we have to take time. We have to give God our time, our undivided attention. 
uh, go into your prayer room, you know, minister to the Lord, sing to the Lord, read your word to the Lord, and the Lord will bless you. Hallelujah. He will bless you to, to understand that your zeal is not just for you, but your zeal is to bless others. Hallelujah. That's coming the way that you came. Yes. And um, the Bible lets us also know that there are times in our lives where, the, because the enemy is the, the prince of this world, our eyes may be blind. Yes, you, 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 you can't see what you're doing wrong, praise God. And, and, uh, but in the beginning, the Spirit of God is going to let you know what you're doing wrong. And he's going to have you to repent. But if you get hard-hearted, praise God, he's going to let you go about your way. Well, 2 Corinthians 4 and 4. Let's turn to 2 Corinthians 4 and 4. And he, 2 Corinthians 4 and 4, thus reads, <laughs> and this is why we know that the enemy of this world has blinded a lot of people's eyes because they, it, the spirit, that spirit, of the devil don't want God to have your soul. He wants to take your soul into hell with him. He wants to take your soul into that lake of fire that the Spirit of God speaks about in Revelations 21, the 21st chapter. But the Bible lets us know that, you know, being spiritually blind is, is, is as bad as being blind to some people. Spiritually blind, praise God, the Bible says, in whom, and, and I'm going to go back a little bit further. I'm not just going to stay on four. I'm going to read four, but then I'm going to go back to the scripture before. And the four, uh, 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 second Corinthians 4, 4 says, in whom the God of this world has blinded the minds of them which believe not least the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. See, so we have to protect our minds, protect our hearts, protect your zeal, protect your zealousness. Uh, don't do it, hallelujah, because people are watching you. Do it because you love the Lord and you care what he feels about you. Because the Bible said, grieve not the Holy Spirit that's within you in Ephesians. And we can't grieve the spirit that you've been sealed with. Yes, and I'm a, like I said, I'm going to go back a little bit further. Where I'm going to read 4 and 1 down to 4 and 5. Therefore, see, we have this ministry. See, all of us has a ministry. All of us that has taken on the word of God and, and we begin to learn it and walk in it. It's a ministry that you have. It's not just for you. It's for you to bless others and let them know that there's a God in heaven that can do anything but fail. And he sent his son one day, hallelujah, to deliver you, hallelujah, deliver us from sin, ah, to bring in love, to teach us what love is all about, to teach us that we can walk up right before him with a pure heart and do that which is good in his sight. Okay, and uh, as we have received mercy, we faint not. And he, he, he sends us his mercy, his goodness and his mercy. That unmerited favor that we didn't earn, but he gives it to us. Hallelujah. Because he loves us. And two says, but have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully. But by manifesting of the truth, commending ourselves, every man conscious in the sight of God. See, we have some people that are walking in the word deceitfully. They're using the word as a cloak. And they're, they're, they're bringing uh, death to themselves. And they're bringing sickness on their bodies. For they are preaching the gospel, but they're committing adultery. They're going outside of their marriage, committing adultery. God sees this. Whoever or wherever people are that's doing this, that's a preacher 
a pastor that's uh, committing this, this evil. Yeah. Take an evaluation of your life. Take an evaluation of yourself. For the grass may not be as green as you think. Hallelujah. Your zeal, hallelujah, is not to satisfy your flesh. Your zeal is to reach out and help somebody come out of the muck in the mire and not to throw them in a situation where they don't know what to do with themselves. Well, because the enemy has blinded the eyes, it let us know that, but if our gospel is hid, which it is hid to them that are lost. We're not just talking about words. We're talking about the truth. If it's hid to you, you're lost. So what do you do? You repent and you ask God forgiveness. You ask him to come into your heart. Renew your spirit. Creating you a clean heart. Renew right spirit within you. Yeah, you have to let him know that you're seriously uh, considering uh, 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 coming back the right way. Uh, seeking through the word the right way. Reaching out with the zeal that he has given you and the spirit that he has given you to seek him. Yes, in whom the God of this world has blinded, as I said, uh, and, and you see it didn't say blind the eyes. He said blind the mind. For the mind is the heart that God looks at. That's the eyes that God sees through. That's why we have to say, Lord, create in us a clean heart. Renew a right spirit within us. Mm -hmm. and, and, and we have to understand and we have to know that uh, 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 because the minds of people can be blinded, it's only if they don't believe. If you can't believe what you don't see, but know that it's been preached, and then you can see it in the spirit, but yet you still don't believe, you're lost. So you have to believe that God is. He sent his son, hallelujah, who was nailed to the cross. Well, Easter's coming up to tell you exactly what Christ did for us. He, he was nailed to the cross. He carried that cross to Calcutta uh, just for us. Mm, if the devil had known what salvation plan was, uh, hallelujah, he would have never crucified him. But because, hallelujah, it was written, Hallelujah, eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, but Christ has delivered unto us freedom from sin. Not saying you're not going to make a mistake, but you don't lay in that mistake. You get up, get up, ask for forgiveness, and run on, and don't repeat the same mistake over and over. Praise God. Then we go down to... Uh, the fifth, but first I'm going to finish out the four. Least the light of the glorious of gospel of Christ, who is the image of God. See, Christ is the image of God. He's the son of God. Should shine into them. For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your servant for Jesus' sake. Yeah, we're preaching not of ourselves. So our zealousness comes, and you can tell when you're just excited about the Word of God. For when the God, Word of God begins to fill you up, you get so excited that, oh my God, it's like you're bubbling over like a teapot, and it's boiling the top, it's boiling, then it begins to ring. It gets, you get so excited until you can't oh, almost contain what you feel, the Spirit of God, because it, it excites you the more. It builds you up, it, it helps you to... Uh, 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 understand who you are. It helps you to understand your purpose in life because a lot, you know, there are some who feel that they don't have a purpose in life. They don't know what their purpose in life is because they don't read. They don't understand. And we have to under, uh, 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 realize that our purpose goes along with the Spirit of God. It goes along with whatever spirit that you're choosing to follow. For, you know, there is a point in our lives where God will take his spirit from you. And I'll, I'll tell you where. Come to 1 Samuel 16 and 14. 
Yep, 1 Samuel 16 and 14. Because 1 Samuel 16 and 14 lets us know, by example, if he can take his spirit from Saul, he can take it from you. Uh, let me read it. 1 Samuel 16 and 14. This is the word of the Lord. But the spirit of the Lord departed from Saul, and an evil spirit from God troubled him. Why you're not happy preaching the gospel of Christ? Hmm? Are you obedient? The Bible preaches obedience from the Genesis, the book of Genesis, all the way to the book of Revelation. There is a part that we must play. We must be obedient to the word of God. The traits of a zealous person which is overlooked if they are considered to be a real man or woman of God. We overlook the fact that just like we, they must die daily. They must die to the flesh daily and allow the spirit to come in and overtake them that they can walk up right before men and God. You got to walk right before God with a pure heart. Nobody wants to die daily. It's, it's like a hard thing to do to, to put away that thing that's uh, troubling yourself and God because he's calling for somebody that shall obey, somebody that uh, who recognize the fact that they're, they're going to be in trouble if they don't change their lifestyle and work on it. Well, the Bible lets us know that perilous times are coming. Turn to 2 Timothy 3 and 1. Perilous times are coming. And he said, and he let us know that because of these perilous times, what was going to happen in these perilous times. And he's letting us know, well, now I'm giving you a description of what is about to happen so that you can evaluate your standards, evaluate your righteousness, and walk upright before God. And I'm not just telling you for you. This applies to me too. It goes, the word comes to me first before it comes to you. Well, this is what the, the word of God lets us know. A man or woman of God that will tell a person who they really are if they don't correct the wrong in their lives. Second Timothy says, three and, 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 and two, this is what you should look for in an individual. If they are really, really dying daily, if they're really striving to follow the word of God. Well, 3.2 says, man shall be lovers of their own self, yet have a zeal. Yeah, they're lovers of their own self. They only care what they care about. They only do what they want. They won't go out the way for you. They won't show you the love of Christ, which is supposed to be shown among the, the saints of God, the people of God. They won't show you that because they don't know how. It's not in them to do. And that's why a lot of relationships are not working out. Because we leave God out. We become lovers of our own self. Uh, he can, he, and those that are seeking a mate, uh, we find we don't look at that. We find that maybe we can change him. If he get to understand that I love him, maybe he'll change. But I tell you, if God don't change him, you can't change him. If he can't buy you a loaf of bread, get rid of him. If he doesn't work, the Bible say you don't work, you don't eat. Get rid of him. And the Bible say if he's not a man after his own heart, run, run, because he's not going to know how to love you. Those that's married. Uh, praise God. The Bible lets us know that there's a, a, a place and a time for certain things. There's a place and a time for you to get closer to your mate. He ordained the marriage between a man and a wife. 
He ordained this marriage. And if you chose him and you made, hallelujah, the vow of keeping him through better and worse, then you may go through certain things. But now if he's beating you down, I, I think you better run. <laughs> run like a banshee. But he doesn't love himself. Any man that beats a woman or any woman that beats a man, they don't love themselves. They don't know what the love of God is. They're not zealous in the word. They're not zealous in following Christ. But I come to tell you there are other things that we must look for in an individual. Yeah, there's covetousness. Covetousness. There is where man want to want what you got and want what they got. And there's these are the things we have to look for in an individual. Because if you don't, you'll be like a ship without a sail. Uh-huh. Covetousness. Uh, they, 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 they don't want to work, but they want your welfare check. Uh, they, they don't want to uh, um, buy you not something nice, but they want to buy them $200 or $300, $500 alligator shoes. Um, they want to buy them. But you out there that's a user, I tell you, find the right zeal. Be zealous unto God so you can learn how to love and be loved. That you can show others what it is to know Christ. And show others that there's a way which is better than what we choose. I come to tell you today, there's a zealousness, and I'm going to complete this the next time I see you, but there's a zealousness that we must understand is uh, not pleasing to God. And if he is in your life, then it's time for you to look at the attributes of the person. Look at why they are the way they are. Before you marry them, search into their history. Search into their family background. Know who you're married. Uh, know who you're married. Look for certain attributes that the Bible show of a good man, and you will make it. I, I, I often say, you know, if God be for you, he's more than a world against you. And I'm thanking you for tuning in today. But I like to tell you, praise God, I'm working on a, 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 a program. And I'm working on a four-part series because the Lord has blessed me to understand a lot. I'm not knowledgeable like some theologians and all of that, but I know what God has taught me. And I know that I can share with others what God has taught me. But I'm telling you, be encouraged because God is a God that's true to his word. Don't be covetous, you know. Don't, don't care about what everybody else wants. See, see first things to me, oh God. All is righteousness. God bless you and may heaven smile upon you. Be gracious unto you. God bless you. She sang from her heart and ministered from her soul.